Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmay here for Simple Snippets and welcome back to the 6th video tutorial under the dynamic web application development using ASP.NET with c programming, bootstrap for front-end styling and MS SQL as database. Yeah, I know it's a very long title but that's the course name and we are in the 6th video tutorial of this course. If you have missed any of the previous video tutorials, I'll drop the link in the video description. Do check it out. But if you followed them so far, in the previous video, we designed the member login page and we also designed the admin login page. So these are the two pages that we designed. And in this video tutorial, we are going to be designing the user signup page. Okay. So how does the user signup page look like? Let's go to our demo website. So this is the entire user registration form. So whenever a new user comes in and he wants to sign up on this online e-library management project website that we are designing, he or she has to do this user registration one time thing and he will be filling all these details full name contact number email id state and so and so and once he or she clicks on sign up these details will be saved in the database in the ms sql database server now the backend code we are going to do later on we are just designing this form so currently on our web page we still have to create the user sign up page so if you just change this link to user sign up and hit enter so you get a blank page because in the previous video tutorial, if you see, we just created this page, but we did not add any code in it. This is the user sign up page and you can see it's completely blank. So now we have to create this form onto this page. Okay. Now, if you just observe, it's not that different from the admin page, right? The admin login or user login page. It's basically a form which has the similar styling. Just that we still have to add more text boxes and you know the form width is a little bit more. So not a lot of customization. It's not something out of the box. So let's quickly start designing and we'll use the code from this admin login or user login page itself. So coming to the user sign up page, what we'll do in this content tag, because this is a content page for the master page, we'll just go to the user login and copy this entire code, come over here and paste it. Let's just save this and refresh our page and okay, there you go. User signup.aspx. This is currently how it's looking. Now we want to make it something like this. So let's quickly change a few things. First things first, let's do the image size a little smaller. Let's do it hundred and name the heading tag as user signup or member signup, anything that you want. Okay. Save this refresh. Okay. So member signup text is added the icon becomes smaller now you can see the width of this form is little larger than what we have over here so we'll increase the width also now how do you increase the width now when we design the admin login and user login page remember we added this class call md6 so what is this now if you watch the bootstrap grid system tutorials you will definitely understand this and it's highly recommended that you please watch it so basically using bootstrap we get a container. So the container is basically occupying so much space, which you can see on the screen. I've marked it in some color inside that we have this row, which basically takes the entire row as the name suggests. And then we have these columns. Okay. So we have 12 columns in bootstrap. So one row can be divided into 12 columns. So right now what I'm saying is my column is going to take six spaces for every device, which is a medium or higher than medium device. Okay. So this is that MD initials for medium device. So once the device becomes smaller than the MD device, this entire division will take up all the 12 spaces. So if I just try to show it, if I just shrink it now, right now you can see it is still taking six spaces or out of the 12 and that's why it is shrinking. So if I increase this, you can see it's responsive and it increases in size. But if I shrink it after some medium size, if I go to a small size device, this entire form should take up the entire space. Let's see, let's shrink it even more. And there you go. Now you can see the form size increased a little bit. If I go a little wider, you can see it again decreased. So when I shrink a little bit, now it is increased in size because now it is taking 12 spaces. Okay. So this is the basic container container leaves some spaces to the left and right. If I do this container hyphen fluid, if I save this and if I refresh this, now the form will take the entire space. There you go. You can see now it is taking the entire space. So if I increase this, it will still take the entire space. Okay. So this is basically the logic behind the grid system. I highly recommend that you watch the grid video tutorials. If you haven't watched it, 
because then you will get a very better understanding but right now we will keep it as container only and now we will increase this to 8 ok so out of the 12 spaces this division will take 8 spaces instead of 6 and now you can see it's pretty much matching the width of the user registration form on the dummy website this text is a little smaller which means that it is a h4 tag I guess let me change this to h4 save it refresh yeah it becomes a little smaller let's see what we have to add next if you see this horizontal rule is there we already have it we have full name and date of birth but they are side by side ok so let's add them instead of member id coming to the code if you scroll down over here we have this big row inside which we have this one huge column now instead of this what we can do we can add individual rows let's copy this let's come over here let's paste this over here and now what I can do I can say call hyphen md hyphen 6 and then I can just copy this and paste it again over here ok so I am just creating a structure inside the first column of the newly created row what I'll do I'll just copy this label and this ASP text box in fact I'll cut it and paste it over here the form says full name so I'm gonna say full name over here the placeholder also is gonna be full name okay similarly what I'll do I'll just cut this label and this division as form group and I'll paste it inside this call md-6 so the second division inside this row now this division is gonna take 6 spaces this division is gonna take 6 spaces together they will take 12 spaces which will be equal equal length I just have to change this password to date of birth right so I'm gonna change this to date of birth ok the text mode over here I will change this I will go to the properties and in the text mode we have a date option so we will change this text mode to date save this let's refresh the page and let's see how our page looks like and there you go you can see we've added the first row the first row comprises of full name and date of birth over here also we have full name and date of birth ok let's see what we have in the second row in the second row we have again contact number and email id so let's quickly go ahead I hope you're getting this I added this one row inside this one row I created two divisions or two columns with equal lengths of 6 and 6 with the breakpoint as md which is medium device so once the device length goes smaller than medium this division will take 12 spaces this division will take 12 spaces and they will be stacked one below each other ok till then it will be side by side so what we have to do now we just simply have to copy this entire row hit enter and paste it over here and just change the names to contact number and email id so I'll say contact number the placeholder can be contact number itself since this is a number you can go ahead and change the text mode to a proper number so the text mode changes to number then we have email id right so let's add email id I'm gonna say email id again text mode can be changed to placeholder can be email id text mode has to be changed to email so there you go let's save this refresh the page coming to our page there you go contact number and email is added so similarly now we have to create state city and pin code but now you can see the spacing has to be divided by 3 so you know that this entire row that we are gonna add is gonna be of 12 spaces that is it can be divided into 12 columns so if you want 3 equal text boxes we have to give each column as the size of 4 right so 4 plus 4 plus 4 is gonna be 12 so let's quickly add them and this is gonna be a select box it's not gonna be a text box so let's add that also so now again I'm gonna copy this entire row come down over here and paste it as it is but instead of division class call md6 it is gonna be 4 there is gonna be 4 and there is gonna be one more division which is supposed to be added so I'm gonna copy this division and paste it over here let's just save this and first see how it looks like okay so there you go you can see we have added 3 equal columns inside which we have three controls just that we have to change this to city this to pin code and this to state and this is going to be a drop down select box or drop down box basically so let's add that drop down box over here we will change this to state and instead of this asp text box control 
I'm going to remove this ESP text box control and I'm going to add a drop down box. So this is that drop down list. Okay. Now we still have to give it a class of form control. So you can add a CSS class or you can also give it a class normal class attribute. I'm just going to add a normal class attribute, which is going to be equal to form control. Okay. So this is going to take the states value, right? And we know that we have only limited number of states, right? So these are always going to be the same. So these are static values. These are not coming from database. So we'll hard code these values and how do we hard code values in the drop down box? So you come to the code. Now this is that drop down list. You can see the tag opening over here and this is the closing tag, right? Between these two, you will add something called as an ASP list item. Okay. So this is the drop down list and inside that we have this ASP list item. The first one is going to be select and the value is also going to be select. So if I save this and if I just refresh, there you go. You can see we've got our drop down list over here with one item as select, right? So we only have added one list item. So that's why we're getting one list item. Now, similarly, I will create more list items over here. In fact, I'm just going to copy paste them. You can pause this video and type it out yourself. Okay, so this is that entire list. I have already copy pasted it. If I save this and if I refresh, there you go. We have the entire list of all the states we have. All right. So the next thing is we have to change this to city and pin code. So we'll change the label and the text over here. So this was the very first division with four spaces. I'm just going to minimize it. Next we have is city, right? So let's create city. We don't have any text mode for this. So the text mode is going to be basic text. The placeholder is going to be city. So instead of the CSS class, you can also have class. Okay. So you don't need to have CSS class as the attribute. The CSS class attribute is for ASP buttons or, you know, ASP components and this normal class is basically for HTML components, but they also can be applied to ASP components. Let's just save this. So that's for city and this one is for pin code. So this is also class form control. The placeholder is going to be pin code and the text mode here is going to be number because pin code is a number. We will do a little bit more validations later on. Right now I've kept it very basic. We are not doing any validations as of now. Maybe when we actually go ahead and design the backend side, we will add a little bit more of validations like, you know, you cannot have empty spaces and whatnot. Let's just refresh and there you go. Pin code and city text boxes are done. So what do you have left? So we have full address now. So the full address is taking the entire 12 spaces with two lines. So it is a multi-line text box. Let's quickly add that. We'll add one complete row. Let me copy this upper row because it's easy to manipulate. So this row is done. I'll minimize it, hit enter. We only need one division with call MD or in fact, it will take all spaces. So if I just say call, it will take all spaces at all times. This is going to be full address. This text box is going to be full address. The text mode is going to be multi line, right? Okay. And the number of rows it will show is two. Okay, let's save this. Let's refresh. There you go. Full address is added. So now the last thing left is the login credentials. So whenever a user signs up, he or she has to create his or her own unique user ID as well as some password, right? And only then he or she can create his profile on this website, on this online e-library management system. So these two credentials are supposed to be taken. So I have added a special indicator over here, which says login credentials. So these were the user's personal credentials, but now we are taking login credentials also. So this is basically a CSS button style. It's not exactly a button. It's actually called as a pill. So it's just a CSS styling. You don't really have to add it. If you want, you can add it or you can just add a basic heading tag. But let's go ahead and add this one row of user ID and password and just one sign up button. Okay. So coming to the code, we'll just copy this row again. We have to paste it over here. Now this last row, we still have to erase some things out because that will only have the sign up button, right? So we have to erase this out. Okay. 
now we've added this new row we need user id the text mode is gonna be normal text so i can just completely erase this text mode out the placeholder is gonna be user id or member id whatever you call it this is gonna be class similarly over here also this is gonna be class this is gonna be password because we need user to create his or her own password the text mode is gonna be password okay and then we have the sign up button let's save it let's refresh and there you go you can see we've added user id and password with the sign up button we still have to add this pill so how do you add that just go to the bootstrap web page just add badge or pill you know so you can see a component named badges and pill badges just click on pill badges and there you go this is how the pill badge looks like so what we'll do we'll add one of this pill you can see these are the respective classes for the respective colors and this is how the look look goes let's quickly go ahead in the code we'll copy this entire row and we will put it above the user id and password we'll erase the code inside which is a button and we'll come to this web page we'll just copy this entire span and we know we want the info one right so this is that span with all the css styling of badge badge hyphen pill badge hyphen info just paste it over here and we will say login credentials let's just save this and refresh our page and there you go you can see login credentials is added but we just need to center it so you can simply use a center tag make sure you close the center tag by using hyphen center I remember me making a mistake in the home page where we had to use the center tag you can see I did not close the center tag however things still got centered but make sure you add the closing center tag in the home page I messed that up okay so that's the home page anyways coming back to the user sign up we are pretty much done let's refresh okay it has to be inside the this division call division okay save this and refresh and yeah there you go the login credentials badge is coming in the center so this is the entire member sign up page if you go ahead and see this and this pretty much everything is similar except the text we've added text as member sign up here it is user registration you can give any text everything else is pretty much the same this link back to home is working it is going to the home page and it's not really bold if you see this is a little bold over here otherwise it's pretty basic and yeah again you can go ahead and style it up you can add colors you can add images and whatnot you can make it very fancy if it's a online e-library you can add a complete huge background over here which has books and all you can make it fancy according to your needs i'm just gonna keep it basic this is the front end user interface we still have to add a lot of back end code and yeah, this is the user sign up page. In the next video, we will take on some other web page, maybe author management, maybe publisher management and other admin oriented web pages. So far, we've created the home page. We've created the user sign up. We've created the user login and we've also created the admin login. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you are enjoying this course. If you've made it so far, please give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was. If you have any queries, you can put them in the comments. If you like this video and if you feel this course is informational, helpful. Please share it with your friends. I'm sure even they will enjoy this course and learn a lot. And we still have to do a lot more development in this entire course. So stay tuned and turn on the notifications. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.